back in the day in porn mags, they used to say <laughs> GFE, A levels, guess what that was? O levels, oral, A levels, anal, GFE, <gasps> girlfriend experience, BBW, big beautiful woman, big chunker, right? All these kind of stuff. That, that's, the <laughs> that's, the term, that's the terminology. How that's, do you know all this? That's the terminology. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. It is episode 17 of Couples Quarantine. I'm James Haskell. I'm Chloe Maidley. You're Chloe Haskell, actually. I'm Chloe Haskell. Yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, I'm both. Well, you sort of are. Um, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. We've got beer again, so we're doing pretty good. Chin, chin. But not only do we have beer, we have another guest. Now, we're rolling out the big dogs one after the other. We have the wonderful TV presenter, comedian, off the extra factor after show celebrity haunted matt richardson how are you sir i'm really good thanks um i'm flattered to be referred to as a big dog when i know that you've had some really good guests like yeah, you know it's, it's all it's, it's all relative it's all relative, isn't it? <laughs> yeah yeah it's all, it's all it relative. is yeah, yeah yeah fair enough i'm, ch- I'm chuffed to be here like it's uh, i think it's going to be a good laugh no we're so excited to have you you are our second comedian but i will i will say jack whitehall was a vet is a very private man so actually coming yeah. on couples quarantine might have been a bit like a fish out of water situation for him but, but you know what though like jack is legitimately very very famous yes. whereas so he's got he doesn't want people to know things because like that can ruin like a disney film deal yeah it's like what are you gonna what what is there to ruin for me like oh you can't be the standby for the celebrity circle this year sorry man. Like, i don't give a shit there's no there's no career oh we're not gonna let you back on channel five star all right who gives a fuck like, oi, da- oi, dave your contract's fucked, yeah. Chief. You, yeah, it's like... Don't you can't, the shit. You're not, you just tore I'm sorry, your, I tore your face, photo and I tore your photo That's absolutely half. fine. Like, yeah, there's the, the stakes are lower, so I'm I'm going to be an open book in the oh. hope that someone listening goes, well, give him a job. Brilliant. <laughs> well, because actually, I listened to your... Um, uh, I did some stand-up. I went on YouTube and did the stand-up. Oh, yeah. and there's that... Um, there's that comedy club in, in Liverpool, the, uh, I can't remember what... Hot called. Water, yeah. Hot Water. I, I actually follow the ginger bloke off it. I should probably learn his name. Paul, Paul Smith, he's called. Paul Smith. I like Paul Smith um, because I love his sort of, he's obviously a bit of the compare on the evening and I saw it and you were, one of your opening gambits, exactly what you said today was, I'm, I'm sort of at that stage where I'm kind of famous, but not famous enough for anyone to really be sure who I am and no, sort of... It's- you know. It's it's like I remember a few like when I first did the extra factor, which was like the first thing I ever did on telly. Like my first job, I've never quite managed to do anything that big again. I was in I was filming in Times Square in New York. Me and um uh, we were, we were stood there filming, and a woman came up to me and she went, "Excuse me, are you are you Matt Richardson?" And in front of all the crew, I was like, "Right, stand back, guys. Yeah, <laughs> fucking yes, I'm Matt Richardson." And she went, "Oh, my son was in your class at school." And oh. that so that's. That's the kind of shit that happens to me constantly. That's the level we're talking about. That's your level of fame. Oh, it's happening, guys. And then, oh, no, it's just they know me. Babe, give it a couple of years and you're (laughs) wishing that you could go back to that. I've been hearing that for seven years of my life. Give it a couple of years. How old are you, though? 29. Oh fuck off! I was about to say though, I was about the joke. You've got like you've got two decades to worry. The joke I was going to go with though, because he's got a bit of a baby face thing. He's actually forty-two, but he's still living out the fact that he's an up-and-coming comedian. I've got I've got a showbiz age of twenty-nine. That's what I'm. (laughs) That's my Russell Kane age. (laughs) How old is Roman Kemp now? Because he still looks like he's about eighteen. Uh, I think he's a must be about twenty nine, uh, and that, it just gives him extra years to work with. Yeah, you know what? Roman's one of those as well. Where um, I've known Roman for a very long time. We don't know each other. Amazing. Everybody well. knows Roman. Yeah, but um, yeah. we sort of started off at the same level, and then I've just sort of see him. Like I'm basically waiting for him or Joel Domit to die, and then I'll get the work. <laughs> you can feel there. She's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what's so it's funny sort of... that you said that? Like I, I saw River Phoenix um, on a, a thing today, and I said to James, like I often wonder if he hadn't died, would Leonardo DiCaprio who's the same age the same look got used to get the same roles would he have had the career that he had had exactly. it not been for river phoenix Lang, which i know is a really morbid horrible thing no 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 but, it's but it is weird it's like those kind of weird events do launch people's careers though don't 100 like, percent. yeah you know like you look at the weird thing with um uh, i mean this morning in john leslie's career falling apart is yeah. the reason philip schofield kind of got his second go so 100%. it can happen it, you know it's these weird things in other people's lives going horribly can really benefit you i mean honestly yeah. talking about joel domit so actually I, I like joel having subsequently met him but on, when i was on i'm a celebrity he was slightly poisoned tongue about me he did you in I, he every did, he, yeah show. he did me he did but me now not, they're friends it's so weird. Said, i like joel but it's one of those things where i have never forgotten so i will give you this promise yeah, Matt, fair enough. Is that if i ever near a cliff edge 
ledge or, or a set of stairs, <laughs> I'll fuck him down. And, and I, honestly, <laughs> You'll I won't fuck him down. I, I, I'll just just go out. I just like that. I look around. I go, oh, Joel, so good to fuck off. I like, <laughs> him down. I'll dust him. That'll be one less person to get. I quite like Roman, so I don't, you know, I don't. <laughs> no, no, no. Dust. Fair enough. I don't expect you to do it twice. Uh, but, you know, just, but, just Joel but, out the way would be useful. But you talked about reskilling and rethinking, you know, before the uh, before the show came on. Before we, yeah. uh, we were talking about the fact that um, Paul O'Grady's been told to <laughs> reskill and rethink as a, a bomb disposal expert. I'm happy to be a hitman because I've got nothing. <laughs> I've got nothing going on apart from this podcast, and this podcast ain't paying the bills. Like this, this light over my shoulders costing more than we make in this podcast. Oh, we don't I, make I mean, anything. Yeah. yeah, I mean that's the beauty of podcasts. You're either making like a fortune, a la Joe Rogan, or you're making nothing. Like, yeah, I'm. I'm I'm like a, such a whore as well. I've got two podcasts and I'm still making no money. Like I'm just yeah. double making nothing. I mean, if you kill these people, you could come on my podcast. That's yes. the only <laughs> currency I've got to offer at the moment. Right. Oh, well, shut it, shut it out because I promise you, when this is all over, everything, everyone's going to feel a lot more safe and calm and less anxious and terrified about life. Hopefully. Um, but it's like, that actually brings me really nicely on to my first question for you. How yes. are you finding lockdown 2.0? And I know that you have a girlfriend because I've Instagram stalked you. And yes. I wanted to ask if you were doing it together. We are. So we've lived together for, we've had a flat together for like three and a bit years. We've lived together. So it's sort of business as usual, really. It's not like we decided to lock down together and, you know, it's been a big test on the relationship. But we we both travel a lot with work, like doing comedy. She, she's a model, so she's away all the time. So it's the longest we've ever spent together without someone being away. And that was interesting. It was, it's been fine, but it was, to begin with, we were like, oh, normally one of us is away a couple of nights a week. So you get a nice bit of time to watch your own things on telly. Or yeah. if you're annoying each other, you have a nice reset every so often. So, yeah. you know, there have been a few days of arguments over nothing. We had an argument today. We had an argument today, actually, because... Um, uh, my, I, I love my girlfriend. She's the best person ever. Like, we're a great match. Oi, great and, way to start a story we're about to slag What I'm it. about to say is going to sound really disrespectful. Um, no, she... But, um, like, she's very impatient. And if something is a minor inconvenience, like, she'll go, well, I can't be bothered with that. Yeah. So, um, today, we've ordered a treadmill for lockdown two. And, um, and there was a bit of an issue with, like, the billing of the treadmill. And it didn't come through. So, she's like, right, I'm calling American Express. I'm telling them that they've got to cancel it. They've got to give me my money back. And it was fraud. I'm like, <laughs> That sounds harder than dealing with the treadmill. And we had a bit of an argument because I was going, I was kind of, I mean, really bad. I feel bad now because like it was actually a pain in the ass in the end for her. But I was like, oh, what inconvenience. And that's you giving it. You're throwing the towel. You're not used to it. You've had such a lot, you know, everything's been easy. So you can't deal with it. And then I felt really bad afterwards. Yeah, you you went from zero to 100. Did you apologize? the same. Did did you apologize? No, we, we haven't apologized. But there has been a couple of jibes from her going, Oh, well, you know, you did say that to me earlier and you were a bell end. Right. So, y- you know, like it's been a bit, um, a bit, a bit tricky. Tense. A bit tense. Well, it's, it's dissipated as the day's gone on, but like she went out for a walk, came back and there was a bit of tension. Still. And also, and you know, the best thing is they're so good at moving on and forgetting stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it norm- like I do stand by that, like she was throwing in the towel too early. I think we both acknowledged that we were both had things that were said that were wrong that but was... neither of us have said that out loud so we've just let it slide oh fine nil, so it's, sort of an un, it's an unknown thing because I look at Chloe and I know full well that she's wrong and I assume that she knows that she's wrong no, but no, she's yeah. looking at me thinking the same thing and it turns out they weren't we're not thinking anything of the sort so maybe yeah. if you haven't said it is it <laughs> <laughs> she's probably going you're a rude prick and you're thinking, yeah, but she knew that she was being difficult and weak-minded. No, but you know what? Like, but we've gone back to like normal life. So I know that we both have acknowledged that there was fault on both right. sides. There is, there's some times where I go, look, there's fault on my side. And I'll try and go back to normal. But that isn't possible because Sam is definitely holding out for a, an apology. Which oh, yeah. is fine. When I've been the wrong, I'm happy to apologise. And it goes the other way. Like, she'll be normal with me when I don't want to give an ap- apology. But today we've today we accepted it was a draw. Do you know, it's really interesting. There's so many parallels there. So I'm really impatient. I get it from my dad. I have no fucking patience. And if something goes wrong, I'm like, no, 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 no. Like, if, if, I'm a, if I've got a plan that I've been looking forward to for, like, a week and one thing goes wrong, I'm like, fuck it, I'm not going. Like, that's yeah, me yeah. to a T, right? And that's James, very similar. Yeah, and James is always like 
Why do you all, if, if one thing, if there's one chink in the road, if there's one thing that doesn't go right, you fuck it all off and you're da da da. And then just like, well, I don't know if it's just like you because James is, and I'm sure you'll admit, quite aggressive when he loses his temper. <laughs> so then he goes from like he's zero to 100 in a second. He's like, and you're a fucking ugly. And then he'll go off and off and whoa, off, whoa, right? Don't call you and ugly. I'm like, whoa, I'm like whoa, whoa. so you're then. Dickhead. This so then we thing. come full circle and then he ha- he's the one that then needs space to calm down. So I have to sit and wait for him to calm down. And then you better fucking believe once he's calm, he ain't apologizing because as far as you're concerned, you ain't never in the wrong. But I like that Matt is aware that he might have to apologize. At some he point. might have to. I'm aware I might have to. <laughs> but I don't you know ha- what oh, yeah. though? I've, I've found recently especially in lockdown with neighbors and stuff like i've done a, like we got on really well with our neighbors but um oh. there was something to do with shared bins and like oh. i left a load of stuff out but the, the, and my neighbor got in touch with me and was like this is really unacceptable blah 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 to our whole group of our building there's three flats in our building and um and i found an apology puts people they're so not expecting you to apologize in the off that it really dissipates any tension so i'm very quick to apologize whenever i do anything wrong i'm straight in with the apology because it i I don't love an argument, really. No, like, I can too. do it, but I don't, you know, I'm a comedian. I professionally argue with people, basically. So I don't yeah. want to don't want a busman's holiday. So I'm, I'm straight in there with the sorries as it often as possible. It does work. I remember when I used to work in Topshop in Oxford Circus when I was saving up for my gap year. And I, and I, and I remember I used to, re- I was in um, Replen, which is basically replenishing the shop floor with clothes. Yeah. And your art, you literally go from the basement up to the top floor and your arms are like, burning like on fire and I and people would dawdle and I have no patience so I hate dawdlers and I'd be like <laughs> uh, uh, and then it would build up and then I basically like cough rudely or be like excuse me in a really aggressive way and the second that someone turned around and was like oh my god I'm really sorry I the guilt I was like no 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 yeah. it's okay uh, it really works so I think this mm. is a lesson yeah I mean let me let me explain to you you know I, that feeling of guilt it just doesn't come because I, oh, really? I I'm fully aware that I'm right and it, and, and, and the, the issue is <laughs> what Chloe has always done has, has, has weaved a tapestry of bollocks that she's selling. <laughs> she's selling to our listeners. What? What? Let's be very clear. <laughs> When there's this one disappointment or this problem, Chloe op- operates the Khrushchev scorched earth policy. So, for example, say on a Saturday we are planning something and on a yeah. Monday there is a chink in the armour. <laughs> the preceding six days will be utter fucking carnage as she oh, is just no. scorching earth and everything until we get to the day. And do you know what? By the end of it, I've wanted to kill her. Right? I'm not going to put my hands out there. I, you know, I have to go into a room and give myself a really bad Chinese <laughs> stab myself with a biro um, and then what happens we'll get to Saturday and it, and it'll be fine but then what's happening oh. is I'm so fucked off we'll have a lovely day and she'll be like why are you in such a mood I'll be like because <laughs> I've had six days of torture you crazy cow um, you know what yeah, though the thing is like when there's like if there's any strife or struggle in my life in any way like if it's with work or life because I'm such a self-involved narcissist because I'm a comedian, um, I I always think like if something doesn't go my way, I'm just like, oh my god, this is going to be such a great story in my autobiography. <laughs> no autobiography is good if you haven't had a bit of struggle. When it does go my way, I'm going to have the best chat show stories. I'm going to sit yeah. there and be like, well, Graham, you know, it was a struggle for a long time. <laughs> like that, I fantasize about things going wrong so I can have that one day. But what a great sorry. way to view life. Yeah, I mean, like, well, but, that's, that's... But, I mean, I don't think it is going. Well, one day I'm going to be so famous everyone's gonna hear about me. <laughs> no but i had i've got, i just released my autobiography right and did i oh, i did yeah then i did and i did that sunday times bestseller if you're asking but it doesn't matter um and i, mean, um, I am asking that's absolutely <laughs> that's wonderful mate thank you well, like genuinely don't don't throw that away that's an incredible <laughs> achievement i hate it when people are like don't be shy and coy about the fact you've got a number one times best-selling autobiography. Shout that from the rooftop. I will do. I, well, I, I have been. I've got one of those cars <laughs> with speakers on it. Like, <laughs> people of Northamptonshire, your king is here. I, um, no, but what? I, what? Mm-hmm. what? No, nothing. Uh, <laughs> no, but I, um, but what I, what I had with that, though, is, is again, everything was, this is a great story. And yeah, on, on all the time, my dad always told me when I was younger, like, listen, just make notes of some of the funnier funnier bits and pieces because they will come to play. And I, I sort of kept a few notes. And Amazing. when it came That's to a so story, good. It, you, it suddenly all comes out. And then, of course, you never let the truth get in the way of a good story. Obviously, with a, well, I'm not a comedian, but you're a comedian. With the spice and spin you can put on it. I uh, yeah I I love yeah. that. So you should you should be proud of that. Do you that what, all the time. I I wish. Um, talking about keeping notes, my mum told me when I first started doing 
like a, when I first got on telly and I was doing kind of like unusual, interesting things, she was like, you need to keep a diary because you'll forget half of this and it'll be, it's really interesting. And like, you know, cause unusual things happen all the time in the kind of jobs us three do. And I think, um, I really wish I had, I'm so jealous you've done it. Like, cause otherwise people, cause all the time I was ch- chatting to a mate the other day and he's like, do you remember when this happened? I was like, no, I don't really, don't really know what that, what you're on about there, mate. <laughs> because, you know, I spent a lot, a lot of the last seven years absolutely battered. So, yeah. <laughs> you know. Seriously. So it's like the entryway into, into showbiz. But so you're like, not- oh, now I'm going to be drunk five nights of the week and get home at five. So you should really keep notes. You should really keep notes on all yeah, that. But you should, yeah. you should, you know, on the, on your old iPhone, you know, the notes on your iPhone or whatever. Yeah. I, I honestly, if something happens, if I go to a dinner and I see someone says something quite funny or, you know, like... Anything you, he can plagiarise. Yeah, for basically, you plagiarise, but also <laughs> you, get, you get weird, you know, f- fan comments things. Where, you know, one of the one of the things I always talk about is this bloke came up to me outside the, the Waitrose in, uh, very middle class, uh, in Northamptonshire <laughs> and was like, mate, can I just stop you there? And I was like, what? And he goes, I used to think you were a fucking prick. And I'm like, oh my God. Of all the things, like, why are you chatting? But, why have you chosen to do that? And he's gone, but actually, I've seen you play for England recently and I think you're a fucking top guy. And walked off and I'm like... Amazing. But Not really a, a compliment. What, like, it's like he shit on me with one hand, but then he offered yeah. me a paper towel with the other. That's a really English thing. Like, even me, like, even me, and I'm on the other side of this. I, I live in quite a nice area where people have got really nice cars. And there's a bloke who lives opposite me who has got a really nice, like, Aston Martin, like a racing Aston Martin, and it's beautiful. And every time I see him getting in his car, I think, I bet he's a cunt, right? <laughs> For however reason, then he owns a really love... And, I like, I park next to his car because I know he's not going to ding my doors. Like, I'm, I'm fucking smart, but I'm always... Like, and he, he's a nice guy. He's got... A, they seem like a nice, happy... Like, keeps himself to himself, no problem. I always go, I bet he's a cunt. He's a cunt. Just because he's got a nice car. It's, it's such an English syndrome. thing. It's English tall poppy syndrome. It's like, nobody wants to be better, you know, in an LA, in America, they want this aspiration of the American yeah. dream yeah, yeah, yeah. is a thing. There's no English dream. Right, it's, it's the English dream is if, you, if you do anything like you know the American flag, right? That's important. The St George's flag is, put, is worn by racists <laughs> and people who like to beat up uh, you know foreign people and they're yeah. not really keen yeah. immigrants. You know, and that's and that Coming and that's from it. an England rugby player. Yeah, but I don't wear the St George's flag because I, I wore one out once. It's like, yeah, they were like, do you work for the BNP? I was like, no. <laughs> yeah. I don't, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's anymore. such a problem, isn't it? It's this kind of like. You, you know, not but you can't even be proud of what you do. Chloe, what you said about her dad. Her dad told me this story actually before we move on to, to talking actually what we fucking got on the show for was. Yeah, sorry. Um, I mean, I've just been chatting, haven't we? Chatting, wait, I love that. I love a guest who just talks, man. It, it makes that, our life so much easier. Chloe's, Chloe's dad was in Cornwall, right? And he reckons he's walking top this cliff path, cliff path, and this bloke is like walking towards him. He's walking, and you can see this bloke's like clocked him. And he's, there's a distance of probably maybe 15 seconds where this bloke, and he can see in his mind, this guy wants to say something. And he's, and he's, and he's like working up to it. And he's looking, he's not making eye contact. And he gets up to Richard. He goes, are you Richard Madeley? And uh, the Why guy, are they always I don't know. And he go, and he the goes, record, he goes, guys, yeah. I'm he a Mancunian. He goes, yeah. He goes, I hate y'all. I hate y'all. And everything you've ever stand for. And everyone, and everything you've ever done on TV. I think you should know that. And then just quickly walked off. And that was like, he'd it built up to it. Like, he'd, he'd obviously wanted that on his chest for years. I and mean, on a cliff path in Cornwall, had spotted his nemesis. His and moment. Just, his moment. Like, and, and, and then, you know, he's never going to regret that again. Look, I, I, the, the only thing about that that I'm stunned by is that anyone can hate your dad. Like, I'm obsessed with your dad. <laughs> As I imagine, like, I imagine people always... And I think your dad transcends love and hate. Your dad is yeah. like this entity... Like I, Jesus of the t- of think, the early morning TV. I like so I am like I always work at like you know always you know what it's like you get asked to develop TV shows and yeah. when we talk about guests in every development meeting I've ever been in we're like so we're gonna have this guest on and we always like <laughs> role play it with Richard Madeley. So we've got this I've got this I've got a podcast me and Matt Willis from Busted do a podcast together yeah. about guilty pleasures and we're coming up with the TV version at the moment like if, if anyone's interested and we're always like so they're gonna come on and their confessions it's gonna be Richard Madeley. <laughs> Well, I love I love shoving mini bottles of Jack Daniels up my ass. <laughs> How do you doubt. know that? How do you know well, that? It's a lucky guess. Is it all the miniatures? Is it all of the miniatures in condoms so... in the bin outside the house? <laughs> 
so, it's such a public persona view of my dad. Like, what is it? Like Troy McClure from The Simpsons? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. My like, God. such like a... Yeah. Like, Hi, I'm maybe, Troy McClure. He it's, fancies but, fish or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, it's, but always, whenever we're in a meeting, it just so happens that, like, he's always, like, our kind of, like, celebrity we'd love to book. There is, I think there is a lot of money to be made um, in an Osborne-style documentary that just follows your dad round. Did you like, see... Did you see <laughs> I think I would watch that to death. Um, I, I also think, um, I do think, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry that we're just talking about your dad. Um, no, I, I love think, it. He's my I best think, mate. I think your dad is like such a, such a sort of, so, so part of the tapestry of Britain. He's un, he's uncancellable. Like, yeah. no cancel culture. Like, it could, you know, like, it could turn up that like, oh, I was, at, I, was at, um, I was at a car boot sale and I found this copy of Mein Kampf and it's got annotations from Richard Madeley. And the public could be like... Of course he did. What a legend. Of course he did. What a diamond. Dicky the Nazi. Oh, you. You (laughs) cheeky bastard. I do live quite near your mum and dad and I do see them from time to time. Like we live like in the same neck of the woods and I don't know your dad. Like we were in the same agency for a while. You know, we've both done a few things. I've, I've met you before. I know Jack, but I just think like, I don't want to talk to him because like he's on such a pedestal for me. (laughs) But well, you know that I'm like I'm. I spend a lot of time. I've I've got a bit of a property nightmare, which I won't bore anybody with at the moment in London. So I'm spending a lot of time at their place. So if I see you when I'm with him, I walk hey. with him every day to Hampstead. If I see you when I'm with him, that's it. Your but- day has come. Hey, I mean, look, I mean, I'm, I'm slightly. I, I, I lived I'm just down. I lived on the high street for a long time. I live oh, just over the boy. heath now. No, it was awful, actually. I mean, yeah. not to have, not to have a, um, not to be like, um, like first world problems, but it's so noisy on Hampstead High Street. Like, oh <laughs> Shut my. up, fuck off. Has right, it? no, it's a dream. I had to move to, location. I had to move to Highgate. Like it's been a nightmare. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> oh, I, just, I had uh, to move five minutes oh, up the, the road. Oh, to the next career's next not going next that next badly there. if you're yeah. fucking living around there, neck of the woods. Mate, Most I mean, comedians I know live in a bin in a field somewhere. Yeah, I mean, like, I've got a much more successful girlfriend. That's why I live in high. Ah, uh, right. Okay. I'm, I'm well, very much, I'm very much a kept man. <laughs> excellent. She is gorgeous, and I and I actually really like the photos that you post of each other. They're very real. They're not like Instagram kind of. Yeah. What's the word? Thanks. Like perfect. Like they're at, they're lovely. Um. So I guess I, I actually really wanted to ask you. What is it like on the dating scene as a comedian? Because I reckon it's very easy to get hot girls into bed. And given that every comedian I know has either dated, married, or is dating or married to a model, quite clearly, it's not that hard for you guys. <laughs> you know you know what, though? I think there's this big thing, I, I really believe, in that funny gives you an extra two points in the 10 out of 10 scale. So, yeah. like, in normal life, I might be a six, right? But I'm funny, so I'm an eight. Like, and that people, I think that really works. And I think that works for both sexes, actually. Like I've got some, like I've got a mate who's, she's probably the funniest person I know. And she's always with like a ridiculous bloke. And like, and because she's fun, like I think making people laugh and like being like, you know, if you're nice to be around, then it's great. But actually like comedians realistically dating, like most of them are miserable fucks. Yes. Like Joel Domit is really lovely to be around, has a beautiful wife, right? All the oh ones my that God. are lovely to be around. She's ridiculous. When I met her at the NTAs, I was like, fuck off with that face. I can't possibly comment, but. <laughs> <laughs> so like, yeah, it's it's one of those, but I wouldn't want to date a comedian. Like we're, we're, a, we're a nightmare because you've got to think, right? You date a musician, like they're going to write love songs about you, you know, like going out with Ed Sheeran, like he's written, you know, he writes songs about you that are going to be massive hits. Amazing. Like you write a comedian, you go out with a comedian, you know, the most horrendous things that happen in your life are going to end up on stage being told to everybody. Like my girlfriend hates it. Like everything she's like, please don't ever turn that into a routine. Always is the stuff that is absolutely going to be a routine. (laughs) Like, Do you have arguments about it? Do you have arguments about it? No. So I've got a routine about my girlfriend. Um, which um, I think I told you, I, I sort of mentioned, I've got a routine that is based around a story of that she was so shit-faced, I had to remove her tampon for her. because Yeah, I want to hear this story. Right, well, the yeah, story. we need to hear this because we haven't heard this. So basically, like, it is, like it's, it is what it says on the tin. Like, she was battered and she was, I was getting her undressed to put her to bed. And she's like, my girlfriend's very northern as well when she's drunk. She's like, my fucking tampon's still in. So I'm like, <laughs> so I take her tampon out and like, we're having a bit of a laugh about it. And then about six months later, I was writing a new show and... And, I, and she was like, oh, you should do a bit about how you have to get me undressed to put me to bed. And I was like, like the tampon bit. She's like, not like the no. tampon bit. No, 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 <laughs> uh, of all the things. Um, but I, that's what I wrote about. I wrote about this tampon thing and I do it live. 
and she doesn't mind it. But then recently I did a, I did a stand-up show on telly and they were like, can you please do the tampon bit? We'd really like you to do it. And it's a show on ITV where they you recreate your routines as sketches. So I'd have had to have acted it out with another person. <laughs> and she put her foot down and went, please, can you not do that? Like, I don't mind you doing it live, but I don't think I can watch another girl pretending to be me have a tampon <laughs> removed. <laughs> Going, my fucking tampon's still in. <laughs> take, take out, you need to take out my tampon in my contact lenses like that, you know. like. Oh, how so, would you take contact lenses out? I'd rather take the mate, tampon I've out. done it before. It's fucking tricky. I've had to take a contact lenses out loads of times. But, but so you I, don't have arguments about it because also, like, there's been a couple of times where she's gone, look, can you actually not? And I've kind of gone, yeah, all right, fair enough. I mean, yeah, I, I would, I think I would really find it hard. Like there have been times where you've told not so glowing stories about me and vice versa, actually. And then the other one will be like, oh, I kind of wish you hadn't. And it's like, uh, and if you're with a comedian, all of that gets used. I've like, monetized we, it. <laughs> yeah, yeah like it's you awful. have. And like, I do remember Russell Kane, like this whole second half of his stand up of the last one that I went to is about how much of a nightmare his missus is when she gets pissed, which is fucking gold. But I bet she was like, you don't talk about what you're like when you're fucking pissed. Of course you don't. Because once again, like you talk about writing your autobiography, you know, you're the one that gets to spin it because you're the one telling the story and there are things like she said the one of the worst moments in her life I was on tour um and she came with her dad and I really like her dad we get on really well but like she had to sit next to her dad whilst I for 10 minutes described taking a tampon out of her vagina and she said the worst part about it was he laughed more than anybody else <laughs> <laughs> yeah dad's so, dad and I do care about that yeah and I well it's weird because I, I when he first came to see me live like I had some jokes about like our sex life like a few little silly jokes like I've got a joke about that she doesn't like but um excellent uh, I've, got a joke about, I've got yeah I've got a joke about her being um um like she's like she's from Yorkshire and I love going out with a girl from Yorkshire except the only downside is when we have sex she sounds like the Churchill dog and I go oh yes <laughs> and, and, and she really hates that joke yeah and well, I remember is it because it's time, so true yeah it is oh like, yeah fucking oh yeah fucking I love it boy oh, if, lick if me you, cunt <laughs> oh my if god if you were my boyfriend I would kick off at that I'd be like you're making me unsexual yeah. to every but other I, person I, in the world to interrupt you I had a like before you go because I want to hear the rest of it but I had a situation once many moons ago when I was single I was having sex with this girl from Wales and she was like <laughs> oh I f-, and I was like having sex from behind and I was playing there and she goes oh I fucking do you know I fucking love English cock and I went no I I think you mean you mean we love my cock. Like half a two stops, she went, no, no, I just fucking love English <laughs> cock. And I was like, ah, you horrible girl. Okay, I'll carry on. It There's was... another one you should tell about the changing lanes. Oh, the yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I tell you, sorry, I'm what? Changing lanes? Yeah, I tell Please. you. So, Very good. So this I is need so to good. Hear this. A, f- a former teammate of mine was um, having sex with a girl from behind. And we could probably do a whole show on this, actually, because <laughs> there's a lot of lads like trying to sneak it up the bum without permission. And um, okay, it's, yeah. it's guys that are having sex from behind. Naughty and what happens is, it, and it's, it slipped out and went in her ass, right? And it just went in. It just went in, right? And, oh, you know, and the bird just turned around and went, <laughs> change, should, change your lanes. Up. No, where is she from? from Bristol. Here, here. Changing lanes, are we? Fair play. And just <laughs> fucking carried on. Oi, didn't the even just bat an eyelid. Accents are, fu- accents are funny. That's the... That's the- <laughs> Like, so Sam also, like, she doesn't sound, like, absolutely doesn't sound how I make her sound on stage. <laughs> and she really hates that, which is which is fair, because I make her sound like a Yorkshire trucker. Whereas actually, she's got a beautiful voice and she sounds amazing. But but also, like, um, because of her job, like, uh, you know, you, you've seen photos of her, Chloe. Like, she's it's tall gorgeous. and beautiful and she does, like, you know, she's been the face of Chanel makeup and, like, you know, all these huge brands. And then when you meet her, she is quite northern and people don't expect it. So I, yeah. I think it's... I think that difference between assumption and what you are is really funny. So people, like with a Bristolian accent, it's like on Love Island. Was it last year when there was that girl from Bristol? What was her name? No, I didn't watch it last year. Oh, there was a girl from Bristol. I know exactly what you mean. And she's absolutely, like, stunning and really lovely girl, but she's Bristolian and... That's the funniest accent of all of them. Yeah, it like, is the best accent. Here, change your name. All right, everyone? Everyone okay? Oh, I tell you what he fucking loves. I'd love to get out of the piss with you. You'd be like, oh, sorry. I exactly. think you're right, though. It humanises people. And it, and it humanises them in a really endearing, entertaining, like, Absolutely. humorous way. Do you remember so when I first started going out with Sam, like, her best mate as well, her best mate Charlotte is from St. Helens. And she's, like, absolutely amazing. She's one of my best friends. And she's got this St. Helens accent. And she's got quite a husky voice. And, like, together, Ooh. they're like, 
five ten, beautiful kind of models, whatever. And then I'd introduce to my friend, and Sam's like, "Hey, how you doing, mate? Nice to meet you." And then Charlotte sounds like Johnny Vegas. He's like, "Hey, yeah, you're right." And you're just like, and it blows people's minds. I, I really it. like that because it makes them, like you say, it humanizes them. It makes them real people. I love it. One of my my brother's uh, best best girl mates, Claire. She's fucking wicked she's from like the dark depths of manchester and she's amazing like when you get drunk obviously she comes to like all our family weddings so i've had a lot of fun with her at weddings and she'll just get absolutely better she's tiny she's like five foot nothing and she'll just like march up to you on the dance floor and then before she does like a, a whip turn around she'll go i am love and then turn around and then march it's off great. again and i'm like you're the fucking best person the north ever. is the best of us as a do nation. you remember do you remember the who was the lady that did the uh, melanie sykes the boddington advert do you oh, remember absolutely that yeah, was yeah, that yeah. that put northern women on the map that that for for me you know my dad my dad sometimes refers to my girlfriend's my girlfriend as the Boddington's girl weird oh, story though yeah. you know earlier on you said that Joel Domic was a Joel Domic was a bit acid tongued yes. yes um so I had that experience with Mel Sykes and now Mel Sykes is a very nice woman right I really like her now but um she's a really good friend of mine she I want to know this story so I went out to when she did I'm a celeb like you did I'm a celeb I went out and did the spin off show you know they send people out for like a few days you know your dad's on it quite often because i always watch (laughs) and um i went out and i thought mel sykes was being unreasonable in this um whatever episode i was talking about and i was very vocal about it and about six to eight months later i decided i was doing a job at wimbledon and i decided part of the deal was i was doing this presenting thing at wimbledon i got some tickets i went and who we sat next to but mel sykes and mel sykes was like you're that prick that had a go at me and i was like (laughs) "Ah, yeah i did and um and yeah, she like really told me off for yeah. um, for having a go, like for moaning about her on a spin-off show. And then she, she made mates with my mum. They're friends now. They exchange texts. <laughs> I tell you what about Mel Sykes, right? She is a ballsy bitch. She's fit. She's cool. She's funny. She's like, like just a 10 out of 10. I swear to God, if you step over the mark with her at any point, she'll fucking tell you about it. Like I know personal yeah. trainers. Like, I used to train with her a lot and we used to hang out a lot. And um, I know a lot of trainers who have, who've trained with her because the fuck the girl knows how to move around a gym. Right. And yeah. then they've, they've basically organized it. So they've been packed with her or they've taken a selfie with her or whatever and then they've been like I'm training Mel Sykes and she has it's happened two or three times that no bee in her bonnet about going right up to them and being like you don't fucking train me I trained with you and like, yeah, yeah, she's, yeah. she's um, ballsy she like she really had a go at me and I was kind of like look I'm a comedian I get employed on these shows to sort of say things yeah. that like and also my reputation I've done I'm, I've been on all of that I, I always say that stuff like that's why they book me and I, we kind of talked it out she had a go at me I kind of went look I'm sorry like you seem very nice and then she's been lovely and then she's yeah. got um, my brother's got autism and she's really close to autism as well Mel so her and my mum like talk about like they share advice and things like that so she said what she had to say and then it was fine but it was it. one of the most terrifying experiences of my life <laughs> so I didn't I've never told what, that story before I, I, I didn't I didn't say what I wanted to say to Joel because it, revenge is a dish, uh, a dish you know best what, served cold Look, so I'm just like, I know Joel is I know Joel is like very buff and stuff but like Joel and I are cut from the same cloth, right? We're kind of comedians. We're quite similar guys. Like, I would never say shit about a man that looked like you. If I, <laughs> well, I actually, like, do you know what I, I mean? actually like, do love I'm Joel, a fucking but I've, idiot. Ne- I've never forgotten, though. It's just every time I see him, I'm like, <laughs> I will kill but you I, one day. I've never had a bad thought about you, and I'm scared of you. Yeah, so yeah, I don't yeah, know what yeah. the fuck he was playing Big at. softy. What, <laughs> when, when, Chloe, I just want to ask, so with it, before you met your lovely partner, yes, did you... Did you always volunteer what you did to um, to, to, to girls? Because I yeah. assume, because people say that you know, the way to keep a woman happy is with humour, and you, you said you get a couple of po- extra points. But did you try to hide what you did? Because was there a couple of times they were like, "Go on then, entertain me." Yeah. No, you know what? Never. When you're meeting someone like a de- for a date or something like that, like people are never interested. Like they, they're not worried about you being a comedian. They're quite interested in it. It's because it's an unusual job, you know. But um, the people are only ever like, "Come on, make me laugh." Like if they've had a few drinks at the pub, like you'll meet someone and they'll do it. But actually, like dating, I'd always say I was a comedian. Have you ever had any insane sort of you know bad dating stories? And we had Jack Whitehall basically said that he went into a restaurant and ordered. 
uh, ordered a bottle of wine and the maitre d' came over and basically upselled him to a £500 bottle of wine. <laughs> and then he, and then he bought sizzling teriyaki and the waiter spilt the red wine into the sizzling teriyaki, which exploded <laughs> into his face, blinding him and also ruining his shirt. So I wondered if you've sort of had any moments where you've tried, because obviously I know we're tongue in cheek, but you know, you have a level of fame and I wonder whether you, if you date, you try to keep it on the, on the low down or do you have these awkward moments? No. So, I mean, when I first, when I first, like I was never, before I was on telly and stuff, like I was never like a shagger, really. Like I'm just, that's never been like my so, Sorry, I mean, not, you can't be, you know. A, you know, we, we can't all be like, you know, international Hassel. rugby stars. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, some some of us just you know some of us are just like third tier comedians and um it's but so when I got on telly like I really lent into it like I had a fair bit of sex which yeah. I wasn't having yeah. before you Do maximized you know I mean? it and also like so there was this girl in my hometown who I'd always fancied like we were kind of like you know we'd always sort of like been mates but I'd really fancied her and I think she knew it and quite liked it and then she we went on a date together like years and years ago and like and I was like oh this was really fun she finally went on a date with me and I was like this is really fun she went I went we should do this again and she went oh I'm busy and I went like forever and she went yeah I'm busy forever um and then I got on Rude. telly and she became very interested in me um so you know we we went on a few more dates and um you know did the deed and uh, <laughs> the and then deed. I was like well you only slept with me because you're shallow so bye see you later love you for that love you for I never understood girls like that and I know that I'd maybe it's because I come from a privileged kind of area in terms of like fame and no one's ever gonna I be just... more famous than your dad so who right. gives a shit um well I mean I don't know Ryan Gosling or maybe. the queen um no but he but I, I've always she's not gonna lick out the queen though is she like, oh let's my be honest God. well you don't know my wife I mean if that <laughs> <laughs> Like I mean, she probably just goes treat it like it's my head on a stamp, you know. Yeah, and then, yeah, yeah, yeah. Treat very me like a good. Lady. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Um, no, what was it? Yeah, but I never understood that, and I, I always found it. T- I, I was always really surprised. Right, I, I used to date an actor who's quite well known, and he would tell me these stories about all these women that he'd basically shagged because he was famous and well known, and people knew who he was. And I was always like, "How could you do that? Do you not find like the, the biggest turn off ever?" And he was like, "No, Chloe, it's sex. I'm a man. I get it where I can take it. It's that simple." And I was like, "I genuinely don't think I could do that. Like, if I, yeah, I, I mean, but then I, I don't it, know if I'm. You know what though? I did it for a little bit." And then it kind of like very quickly wore off. And then I met like I, my girlfriend before my current girlfriend, which um, is a whole other disaster we can talk about <laughs> later on. Um, but uh, um, basically, um, yeah, I did it a bit. And then there was one girl I went, I, I went, I remember there was this girl that kind of from my hometown, very like lovely, beautiful girl. And like, we'd never really known each other. And she just sort of started talking to me online and things. And she was really nice. And I was like, oh, I've got to go to this like event do you want to come and we went to this like really big charity thing you know like a dinner and all this yeah yeah and then um and and then she was very interested and and then we were out after after this event we'd gone for drinks with the guy that had organized it ashley table from global radio like it was a global radio thing right yeah and and then very quickly she basically went i want to be a presenter and how can i do it to him and i was like oh oh that's the only reason you've kind of oh, no. come to this and and then it was really icky and then like i was staying in a hotel because I didn't live in London. And she was like, oh, I'm going to come and stay at the hotel with you. And I was like, cool, well, I've got work in the morning, so I'm, I'm going to sleep. And she's like, no, let's do all the sexy things. And I was like, no, because like you did that, that you sort of showed your hand and it was really like icky. icky. Like it made me feel a bit. Ugh. That's the word for it, icky. When people like come up to other famous people, we saw it, well, didn't we recently? We won't tell the story because it'll embarrass people. We saw it recently oh, with a friend yeah. of ours is in the public eye and other friends of ours. And it was so icky is the right word for it where you're like oh yeah. this is really uncomfortable to like, watch she'd been like really nice all night but then all of a sudden like to this really powerful guy she was like how can what, I want to work like what can you help me with and I was like Mm-mm. come on mate you work in marketing like just give it a break for any like give it more than one evening so like yeah. we all have normal jobs before we do this right a lot of us that's fine but come on just give it a give it a second go of meeting someone that rather than going make me famous please. You've, Agreed. you've won though you know because being a bit you're a bit of a heartthrob didn't you wear, win weirdest oh, crush yeah. or something like that I won Heat Magazine's weird crush in 2014 <laughs> and uh, i tell you what I campaigned hard for it when they nominated me because it's like a public vote is it I like, yeah I was like there's no point being there's no point being further down the list do you know I'm going to push you, it I'm going to be, you know, like I think Russell Howard won it one year and he he said, there's no point to, you're king of the munters. So you might as well, you might as well be king. 
because like the year afterwards 2015 I came fifth and that wasn't that I'd gotten sexier I'd just gotten less famous <laughs> and you were like I don't want some bullshit mediocrity I want number one or nothing yeah, yeah. and also I mean I had a tour to promote at the time and I knew they really pushed that com- competition hard so I really went for it like <laughs> and I did a sexy photo shoot in Heat magazine as a fire ah, yeah, as, as a, a fireman, fireman policeman yeah it was like an ironic sexy photo shoot and a safe- ironic well it became I'm ironic but it was deadly serious at the time you were like this is yeah, really professional I mean, and then you were like oh uh, I- irony no no like I'm totally on the joke here guys like, when they were all taking the photos and laughing I was like yeah so funny isn't it this isn't soul destroying that you're um, laughing at me at all but this is part and parcel of like being known I mean I always said I look like my dad in a wig and I'm okay with that <laughs> and I mean, I'm into look- her dad and now I've got a dad <laughs> in a wig I just with- want to say with very a pair lucky of boobs. Man. Very, yeah, very, very, with lucky. a pair of boobs without a willy. So I'm yeah. winning. You know, wait, you know what? Have the full experience. You know, when you're getting amorous, just put an earpiece in and have someone yelling, don't say that at the same time. Yeah. And then it's like being Judy. I did, I did. That's fucking, how did you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That is, that's, well, that's what we're into. I've normally, I've normally got a headset, like I'm landing a plane. <laughs> Richard, stop doing that. I'm like, Richard, please keep doing it. Yeah. Well, what you should do is if, you know, like if, if that's your thing, just count down to, count down to ejaculation like you're going into a break yeah oh <laughs> yeah in five four <laughs> <laughs> what um what was it gonna say because it, well that's the weirdest thing we've i've ever talked about on a podcast well imagine a dad when he fucking hears this um <laughs> does he it. listen to this no but the daily mail no. keep taking it and put it on the internet like mark we there's a story where chloe dobbed chloe did a oh, shit chloe's an agony aunt for the sun right and she basically um, did a sex column and what the son did instead of like doing the right way they took pits of the sun column stitched me up with it made it like an actual made story it an ex- a sex exclusive a sex exclusive that basically my wife had admitted that I'd slept with a thousand women which was which know, was a tongue in cheek t- really tongue in cheek it's, it's way hard <laughs> like what the fuck's she talking about right uh, and she made it manageable for the average punter in the street who ain't that bright and uh, and then they were like sex and street can't and count her. beyond a thousand <laughs> yeah, can't, yeah exactly can't get to a thousand you know and then basically my mum she was like, oh, and my mum is like perpetually ashamed of me. Like she's so proud, she's so proud, but so ashamed. And because yeah. of that generation now are so too. much like looking over the fence at each other and like, you know, because there's a real thing called Chloe told me called a bitch whistle where basically women say shitty comments. Yeah, women yeah. say shitty comments to other women. Only other women can, can hear it. it. So other, like- and nobody else in the room can hear it. But if one woman says something really cutting to another woman, everyone will carry on eating their canapes and drinking their yeah. drinks. But if the other woman will be like, what the but like once you know about it, you hear it, and you'll give an example. Go, oh my god, I love your hair. It's so brave you've done that. And everyone's like, Oh, she likes your hair. She's like, So brave you've yeah, done Yeah. You know what? I, I once got a bitch whistle. Um, and I mean, <laughs> if, if the Daily Mail are going to pick this up, great. Um, yeah. So when I, I was on Virgin Radio for years, and then Chris Evans joined. Yes, yes. And Chris Evans once gave me a bitch whistle. Chris Evans, the first time I ever met him, I was like, oh, hi, I'm Matt. And he went, oh, yeah. He goes, he goes, you do stand-up as well, don't you? I went, yeah, yeah. He goes, you know what? I've never met anyone who could do stand-up and radio and do them both well. Yeah. And I was like, ah! yeah. And it, and it wasn't until, like, it was one of those where it was like, I didn't realise he'd insulted me until, like, three days later. And I was sat doing something, and I was like, oh, that wasn't him saying I can do both. And then you yeah. were like anxious and then outraged all at once because you were like, fuck, that happened and it passed me by. And but also oh at the God, time, I was like, at the time he said it, I was like, oh, thanks very much, mate. Cheers. Yeah, that's great. Not I am doing the both well. I am doing the both well. But that was not that what well. he was saying. No, Chris Evans no. does that well. I've seen and heard him do that many, many, oh, okay. many, many right. times. So I, you're I'm not glad alone. I'm not the only one. <laughs> have, you, have you had any mad um, stalkers? Because, you know... I had one particular one for, that went on for like six years. Did you? In, uh, really? yeah, you know, I've told you a story. Well, you about married her, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I did. Hey, uh, I hated him. Thank you very much. Oh, I know the girl in. Yeah, I know the girl. Yeah, this girl like basically pretended she moved to France and um, was pretending. And she pretended she died, and then, you know that she was in a coma, and she was like she faked her own. Yeah, death. she was like four different personalities. Pretended she was Tom Ford's PA. It was so. It was so bizarre. But I wondered if you've had any sort of really keen fans or mad stalkers. You know what? No, I think I don't. I've not really had any stalkers because I am obtainable. <laughs> like it's. Do you know what I mean? Like you'd stalk someone that is beyond your grasp. Whereas I think people just go, "Well, I could meet him and be be his mate or go out with him." So it, you don't yeah. really need to stalk me. Fine. I did. I did have a, a woman from America, who um, used to like n- had never talked to me ever. But every so often, like every week or oh. so would just send me like a naked video on instagram like would private message me and i was like 
I don't know what she wants. Like, am I meant to like what? And I'd show my girlfriend. I'd show Sam and be like, "This girl's sending me these weird videos," and we'd have a right old laugh about yeah, it. I, I, <laughs> I had that similar, similar woman, like a similar thing. I said to Chloe, I said, "She goes because I can see Chloe's always looking at me, like you know those lazy, uh, laser beady eyes. She get dick pics all the time, and we've talked about it on other shows where lads are sitting at home and they're so horned up, they're like, "Fuck, you know." I tell you what, I'm going to do. I'm going to fire this over to Chloe Maidley. She's going to see it and she's going to go, oh, I want to sit on that now. Deliver that instead of the reality, which is uh what are you doing you sick fuck so i never get any of this stuff and then i had this one girl that kept sending me and i was like, like this happened that she's nervous like chloe i feel like she was really and, and she had a really good body yeah she and also body. like this no, this girl she would say that she was she, she was very attractive and we were both like do you think she's real and like you go through an you know when you can tell someone's instagram is real or not really yeah. like yeah. you have a good look and, and i was like she lives in la so she doesn't want to do any of this like obviously like this is all a bit weird but but also like like what? Like what are you meant to do with like? She's just kind of gone. That's enough. Like, yeah. yeah. Hello. And yeah. I go. Oh yeah. Fair. Fair play. But me and my girlfriend go. Yeah. Good looking girl. She's hot. Not, but also like my girlfriend would go. You need to block her. And I'd be like, well, let's not be so hasty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because that's what he's like too. She's, she's made the effort. Like she's not said anything offensive. She's not a racist. Yeah. yeah. You know, she's just putting herself out. She's there. not a Trump supporter. She's, she's not a Trump yeah. supporter. She's just. You know what? She's shooting her shot. Why am I going to punish the girl for that? <laughs> I want to do the same thing. What's we've the got, problem? We get people who write into us with questions, asking we wanted, advice. We wanted to ask you some of them because we got, think you're yeah. fucking oh, funny. Okay, <laughs> well, thanks so, very much. No Cheers. Problem. Sure. Okay. Are you ready? The, the title of this question is, Can Fuck Buddies Actually Be Just That? Hi, guys. I have a bit of a fun story to share here. Please keep me anonymous. With the big question at the end being, Can Fuck Buddies Actually Be Just That? I began chatting to a girl online that I knew through living in the same area and going to the same school, but her name was all that I knew about her. She'd been single for some years, so we came to the agreement that we would be fuck buddies for the time being. I made it very clear to her that I was not interested in entering into a relationship, and she agreed. Into something, but not. And she agreed that she didn't want a relationship either. But would you believe it? We ended up falling in love, becoming exclusive pretty quickly, and we've now been together for five years. Now, the Worst reason I'm asking... <laughs> now, no, I mean, that's a fail. <laughs> <laughs> this is the intro. There's well, two powers well, left. Jesus. Okay. Oh, my God. Now, the reason I'm asking the question... I think she just fell in love with him. She's like, if I go out with you, will you shut the fuck up? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> on and on. Oh, my Fucking... God. Talk, um, always with the talk in you <laughs> Jesus Christ now the reason I asked the question of can fuck buddies actually be just that is that a close friend of mine left a relationship just before lockdown and has recently started to sleep with a girl on a no strings attached basis he is adamant that no more is going to come of him seeing this girl but I strongly disagree we keep debating this. I strongly believe that if you fuck somebody and then they immediately get up and fuck off once the deed is done, then that is a fuck buddy. And it's hard for anything else to exist beyond that. But as soon as you start chatting, getting to know each other, spending time together, texting each other throughout the day, or anything more than let's just go have a fuck, then there is bound to be more in development. And my friend has actually already admitted that their no strings attached means that they can't sleep with other people uh, and they've already done more than just fuck such as go on long walks and have days out <laughs> locked down together um, I, he is adamant what a sad time we live in that you're like well they've done more than fuck like Oi. not what weird stuff a what walk a set of absolute what fucking time, amateurs what a sad time we live in that this is a debate that he feels he needs us to settle so he says, he's basically saying at the end of it I feel like my point has already been proven he's adamant please will you settle this debate Matt over to you look I think ultimately I think um I think you probably can be um, fuck buddies with somebody. I I don't think I've ever... I, I've always been like a bit of a... I've never really slept with people once that much and then just pissed off. Like a few times, but okay. but like, but like I've always like had a bit of a thing with someone for a few months where you yeah. kind of do message each other and you don't really see anyone else. So I've never done it. But I imagine there are people out there that can do it, but neither of these people have achieved that. <laughs> Like, the only way that a long walk is involved in being a fuck buddy is if your long walk's on Hampstead Heath and you're going to shag in a bush. Like, oh, that's yeah. the only... That, that's fuck buddies. I think part of the fun of it, and I have had people who I've had, you know, j not a relationship with but been sleeping with, and I think part of the fun of it is actually, part of the excitement and the sexual chemistry is straddling that line between... 
Oh my god! Where I just I did well? have I did have a actually now I think about it I did once have a proper one. Um, so there was this years ago there was this girl and I'd be in London once a week filming a show and the only time we would speak is I'd go to the bar after the show on a Saturday and she'd text me going where where uh, shall I come shall I come and see you and and then she'd leave on the Sunday morning and we wouldn't speak for the rest of the week. I think that's the proper that is the proper and that lasted for what like two or three months like it wasn't a long thing. Yeah, but that's but was a like, fuck buddy. That is, and like I, I couldn't have told you anything else about, like I couldn't have really told you anything about her apart from that. Yeah, you know, I hate to say that uh, I've got a black belt in uh, fuck buddies, but I actually did have one. And and to look at me, you, you would <laughs> do never they give guess. those out. They so actually do. They do actually they? do. If you go to certain dojos, is it like um, Russell Russell Brand presents it to you? It, it is. It is. You get a pair of <laughs> kick ass trousers, a fucking nice black belt, um, and basically, I this was my specialty. Because, but I will say, I will say, actually, I used to complicate it because I used to like what is known in, in escort circles is the GFE, the girlfriend experience, which is what, what we would do is you would, ha- you would have the fuck, but you'd be very clear. You'd go, Listen, it's going nowhere. But for that time you were with them, you would, you, you would sleep. You've had the cuddles, you've had that. You just send them on their way and they would know everything. Sorry, are, you, are you just openly admitting that you slept with escorts here? No, I, no, I no. I feel like we got no, blurry. No, 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 sorry, sorry. <laughs> We've been, just, we, I mean, it wasn't even like anyone got that out of you. You were very no, no. free to admit Sorry. that. Then. It's oh, guilty. No. The Stop asking, right, guys. <laughs> no. No, no, no. Sorry. Which is the girlfriend experience. No, let me tell you, because because of a man in the world, no, I'm not with escorts, but the man in the world, there are certain terminology that you used to see back in the day in porn mags that used to say <laughs> GFE, A levels, guess what that was, O levels, oral, A levels, anal, GFE, <gasps> girlfriend experience, BBW, big beautiful woman, Big chunker, right? All these kind of stuff. That, that's, the Fuck that's, it. The term, that's the terminology. How do you know all this? That's the terminology that you know. That's the ter- that's the terminology. Does everybody know this. Do you yeah, know this? Is, man? You knew this. Don't fucking no. play shy. Don't. Yes, you did. Yes, you no, did. I don't know about the, but the problem is, it's like the girlfriend experience. Like because also, like if I was sleeping with someone, like I really like. I also like. I'm very like. I love meeting new people. Like I love like hanging out with people and like. My girlfriend's always going off at me because she's like, "You're like," she'll be like, "What are you doing today?" And I'm like, "I'm going for coffee with blah blah." This person I've met two times, and she's like, "Why are you bothered?" And I'm like, "I love that. I want to make. I want to be. I love having loads of mates and like knowing loads of interesting people. So I can't do the whole fuck buddy thing because like I'll meet someone and be like, "God, you're really interesting. Let's go for Let's dinner date. and hang out." And yeah. then you end up falling in love with them. You two, you yeah. should have married my wife because she's exactly the same thing. Are you the no. same? Yeah, I'm like. I'm like, after about five minutes of talking, I'm like, yeah, I've actually heard, that's enough about you, let's talk about me. I've got loads of people that I go for a coffee with every six months or so. Like, that I just sort of pop in. I love it. You're yeah. so oh, much yeah. like that. And yeah. I, I'm but, such a, like, little social butterfly. Nah, I, that's so good for you, though, I think, mentally and obviously socially, and given what you do, which is having to perform and connect with thousands of people at a yeah, time. Yeah, I like. mean, but but it's, I mean, f- thousands, tens of people at a time <laughs> on that Richardson tour. <laughs> Ten right. people at the pub. Oh, we've, got, uh, we've got our last question here before yeah, we on. move on. But anyway, I was basically saying that I, it, it is possible to do it, but the, the, the two people in that thing have failed miserably, so don't bother. Basically, he's just the worst person at one night stand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How good are you? I'm fine. Five years really in. What? Well, after one, what, I, I'm five in today. And I've I, I've moved house three times. You still keep fucking turning up. <laughs> I don't understand how. Honestly, she I've gone turned, to Northamptonshire. Why hey, are you here? I moved house without telling her, thinking that was going to be done. She turned up like Paddington Bear in a box with a. You, it, you know. Do you think that I would have moved out of London? To the middle of a yes, field. Yes, I'm that good in bed you. and that funny. You're welcome. <laughs> right, anyway. Right, listen. Absolutely phenomenal. Solve yourself. Right, I've got this last question. Hi, guys. Loving the podcast. So funny, but also informative. 15 years ago, I was living with two women and we were all seeing each other. <laughs> Sir. A thruple. Is, it, is, this a, is this a gentleman rather than a Yes, this woman? is a gentleman, right? What a fucking boy. This lasted for about nine <laughs> months and was great fun. But since then, I've been in various short-term relationships. But for some reason, I don't seem to attract people my age. I'm 47 and often have older women, 10 to 15 years older, cracking onto me. Poor, that is punchy, 47. Um, cracking onto me. Wow. Uh, but women that age that age don't appeal to me. Also, the reverse of it. I have women 20 to 25 years younger than me cracking onto me. And whilst they often appeal looks-wise, and I've had a few short-term relationships, it's hard to find things in common. And it's really embarrassing when I say, do you remember this? And they say I was eight or even worse, not born. How do I attract women closer to my age? Right. 
This I, I, my, my first recommendation: stop banging on about all the young women you've shagged. <laughs> yeah. Number one, that's oh, what I was. I mean, say. woe is. Oh, the problem is, mate. Whoa. Like, I just keep like these eighteen-year-old girls just fucking love me. Like, Wait, so, remember- so why why are you on a date with me? Can you tell me, forty-seven-year-old woman? Like, he's going the wrong way about. Wait, do you remember that sick time that I lived with two women and we were just drilling all the time? We were going out with each other. No, yeah. mate, that's not part of the story. That's got nothing to do but with the story. On. But I tip my hat to you because of what a professional. But hang on, don't you think living with two women would be a nightmare i mean i can't see that being an I, i've i've lived with, i've i've only ever lived with female housemates and it's absolutely great like i love living with women they're <laughs> much better than men men yes, don't wait. really do any like they, they like my, my my housemate sarah really picked up the slack in our house uh that i left so uh you know i think that's fine but also this guy who's like yeah you know like you're right that had no relevance to anything he was going to ask. Yeah. It's like, I went to the moon once. And by the way, do you think you can get oil for my car at this local shop? You're like, what are mate, you fucking talking you know, about? Oh, mate, I tell you what, I've, I've been trying to, I've been on the phone to Coots all day, dealing with my banking. Like, what a nightmare. <laughs> anyway, um, do you have a Big Mac or uh, I've got to wait five <laughs> yeah. minutes for one? What? Like, come on. I know how exactly what the thing, if you go on a dating app, and this is the, the downfall of dating app for many people, is that you have to put an age bracket, right? Which basically means that you're cutting out somebody who could be perfect for you because you have to put an age bracket, which is a nightmare. But for you, it sounds fucking ideal. Get on Tinder, put in your age bracket. Age bracket. Yeah, you just cut everyone yeah, but out. Also, um, maybe like, maybe like, you know, maybe like, uh, this is awful because he's obviously listening to the podcast and I don't want to be, I don't know the guy, but like, you know, Maybe he's appealing to people who are looking like the kind of guy he is. Like you know, he lived in a thruple for a while. Maybe he's a bit flash, and he seems like he's a bit. Maybe he's a bit flash, and he seems like he's a bit um, shallow. So young women want an older man, and they think, well, that's not going to be serious for me. So he's attracting women that aren't after anything serious. Yeah. So he needs to show that he's a serious man with deep emotions, and then people his age who are looking for something proper will go for him because they're looking for a toy boy, and they're looking for to fix you know whatever issues they have w- with older men. So Such he needs good to advice. Start- he needs to start showing the serious man that he is. Right. Yeah, good. that's a standing ovation. We can't follow Very that. I, w- I yes. will just say, I will <laughs> just it. say that while we have taken the piss, what's your secret, sir? Because that was unbelievable. The you first part. Married, Jane I, I, I am, but just in case it doesn't work out, um, how it's twenty twenty. It? Marriages take all sorts of forms. Yeah, they let, do. Let the man live. They do. And if you want to, if, polygamy, if, it's not one that I will stand for. Thank you very and much. And if any girls, fair enough. Even if, hey, even if I move in and we can be a thruple. <laughs> Well, Wait, well, you'll be picking up the slack in the kitchen. Hey, hey, yeah. hey, hey, mate, you can, you can, you can get your A levels with me. <laughs> right, exactly. The best thing is that <laughs> Chloe. Chloe's one of these modern women who's bore other women. A man bigger than bigger than me with more muscles to join the party. Fucking how open minded she is about that. Honestly, yeah, she'd have well, me in the corner in a cage while some better looking bloke was I've hanging never out back of her. You know what? That's two men, and I would quite like to try it at some point. That's like, that's like my girlfriend who always is fuming whenever I bring up any of my celebrity crushes. Um, especially because like like so like for example Cara Delevingne always been a celebrity crush of mine my yeah, girlfriend knows too. her they're, they're like they, they know each other they've worked together a lot so she doesn't like that but then we'll be watching Coronation Street Adam Barlow comes on oh I don't hear the end of it do you know what I mean like fucking hell <laughs> it's one rule it's, it's, it's one, one rule for them yes. it's a one way street no, but, it? unbelievable but Matt honestly it is it's like Chloe goes oh Oh, God, she does all sorts of things to me like so hot so and so and I go fucking hell well I'd knock in that one and she's like oh. <laughs> Do you think, no, do I, am I good looking enough? And I'm like, hold on a minute, you were just, fucking dribbling over Tom Hardy about five minutes ago. Can I just explain this? Because all the, no offence, but all the women that James fancies are crap. And all the men that James fancies are thick. So like, he's, like, he's, That's really funny. He's obsessed with like page three girls. No, so I'm, I'm like, not. can we level it up a bit? I said, and he's always like, well, it's just Charlotte the reason Hansen. I, the reason that I really fancy them is because I feel like I could get with them. I'm like, no, you can't because you're fucking married. Kate Beckinsale? Kate, but very, but the thing is, so my girlfriend is like all of the all of my celebrity crushes do sort of fit into the. My, my girlfriend is very much in the same mould as them. She's yeah. just the best, in my opinion, is the best oh. one. So I always fancy girls that like you know, my androgynous and beautiful and tall and 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 so my like I never say like it'd be awful if I was like oh my god I tell you who I really fancy and it was some like blonde buxom girl because that isn't my <laughs> type so at, least, at least my girlfriend's always like well it's just shitter versions of me no this you know, is whereas- true so the Kate Beckinsale thing I don't like because she looks a lot like your ex oh. so I'm like well I don't like that so that's a oh, no there we go. but if he says like oh, you know, <laughs> I said Scarlett like Hansen a, if you pick like a blonde curvy girl I'm like well mm, Jessica I can Biel, kind of Scarlett start Hansen, on the I said, of Angela that. Jolie Helen Mirren is a big one of mine <laughs> Helen Mirren, absolutely. Yeah, she's well, got, she's got, 
You know why? She looks like you'd have love. You'd have a lovely time together. Oh, she's got Dame a Judy Dench. Dame Judy Dench. No, I disagree with Judy Dench, but Helen Mirren absolutely. Like oh. she's got a twinkle in her oh. eye. She's naughty. You can tell you. Oh, she's so, take so you on a great night. Hold the Dench, but take the Mirren. All right. She's also hold got the Dench, good you know. boobs. Of Helen Mirren, really. I've good never boobs. noticed that. I just think she. I just think you'd have a really good night out in Knights uh, Knightsbridge with her. Like she takes you <laughs> to some really nice clubs. You know. I Isn't love that. Isn't she friends with and, Russell Brand? Yeah, I think they are. And she, yeah. and you'd be in bed by nine because she's eighty. <laughs> That God, she so looks true. good for Give her a milk Imagine that, too. you'd have a lovely date, you'd go out for dinner, a bit of dancing, a little smooch, and then a Werther's Original, just at the end, and a fiver. <laughs> oh, crotch, or a pocket warmed Werther's Original from a handbag. <laughs> <laughs> you know, or, or a humbug. Um, well, anyway, listen, we've talked enough shit for over an hour now. Matt Richardson, you've been unbelievable. Oh, the best. This has been absolutely lovely. I've th- Like, when lockdown's finished, let's do this in a pub, because I've really enjoyed this. Matt, where can people find you if they want to see what you've done and, and what you're up to at the Look, moment? I mean, I'm up to, let's be honest, very little. Um, I, uh, I've i got a podcast. So me and Matt Willis do a podcast together called When No One's Watching, um, where we get celebrities on and they talk about their things they enjoy when no one else is around, like their weird confessions. I'd love to have you two on it, actually, if you'd like yeah. to come and do oh, 100%, it. 100%. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. have you. And I also, do a, I also do a podcast with the wonderful Amy Vos called Sports Virgins, where we talk about sport. So uh, Dylan, who's our sport expert, and Amy Vos and I, who know nothing about sport, all talk about sport together. And it's basically us going, so he he plays for Man U, right? That's, that's sort of the vibe of the show. You'd Perfect. be great on that. Uh, yeah, I'm terrible Doesn't at work sport. I don't know anything about, about it as well. Really? Amazing. No, so I get on there. but okay, And also, if, you, if you've got Instagram, they can find you on? Look, I've got an Instagram. It's um, at Matt Richardson 3 same as Twitter and all that. And it's just photos of a cat, basically, these days, because I've got nothing else to take a photo of. Well, take photos of your hot misses. That's what I'm looking yeah, for. Yeah, definitely. I prefer, I prefer the cat if I'm on it. <laughs> She's at Sam Rollinson, if that's what I No, I can't. That's too I direct. Will. That's too direct. You'll be like that. <laughs> You've got to have one degree of separation. Right, the, the laser eyes will come out and be like, what are you doing? Like, oh, it was research. The podcast has been made. Um, listen, I've been James Haskell. I've been Chloe Haskell. At, oh, better Hi, from you. Yeah. Love you, babe. Uh, this was episode uh, 17, I think, of Couples Quarantine. If you like it, please share, please subscribe. Um, tell your friends. We're obviously on YouTube as well. You can find us on, uh, wherever you get your podcast from. Uh, hit us up on uh, Instagram at James Haskell and uh, Chloe Maidley. At Maidley Chloe. At Maidley Chloe, I should say. And uh, we'll be back next week with somebody else. Mm-hmm.